This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Second, It was cloudy in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of detective headquarters. The boss is Captain Didion. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. It was almost five o'clock. It had been a long day. You know, this is really getting to be the camel's back. What is? I'll tell you what is. The straw that broke the camel's back, that's what is. What's that? All this paperwork. Yeah, there sure is a lot of it, all right. A lot of it. That's all being a policeman is anymore, shuffling papers from one pile to another. You know what I think, Joe? No, what do you think? The hazard on this job isn't the criminal. It's writer's cramp, typer's knuckle. You know what it's coming to, don't you? No, partner, tell me. It's coming to the point where you're going to have to fill out a form to go to the men's room. You know what you need, don't you? What do I need? You need to go home. It's almost 5 o'clock. Yeah, I think you're right. What about you? What do you mean? Well, what are you going to do tonight? Oh, I got night school. This is Tuesday. Your class is Thursday night. No, that was last semester. This time, it's Tuesdays. Oh, what are you taking? Psychology. Well, actually, it's more of a sensitivity session. A what? Sensitivity. There are about 20 of us, and we just sit around in a big circle and talk. What about? Anything at all. You just sit around and talk, and for this, you get a grade? Well, if you're just a warm body, you know you just show up for class and sit there without saying anything. The professor says he'll give you a C. Now, if you join in the conversation, participate, then you're going to get a B. Things have sure changed since I went to school. You had to do a lot more than just talk to get a B. Well, you see, the idea is to be honest. Let your hair down, you know, get to know one another. They know you're a policeman? No, nobody knows what the other one does. That's the idea. The professor says he wants is to react to the person, not to the occupation, you see? It's an interesting group of people. But are you really picking up anything you didn't already know just being on the job? No, not so much new things, just a different way of looking at old things. But like this one guy, Jerry, he's about 33. He admits having been busted for narcotics. Says he's taken 150 LSD trips and the doctor told him he was psychotic. And you mean this guy copped out to all that in front of 19 other people? Oh yeah, that's the idea. Everybody's supposed to cop out to something. Confession's good for the soul, or something like that. Well, that's not exactly a new idea, is it, Joe? No, no, it's been around for a while. At least I know what kind of grade I'd get in that class. You do, huh? It's obvious. The only way to get a B is to confess something, right? Yeah. Well, I'd have to take a C. You would? Of course, Joe. I have nothing to confess. <laughs> Joe, come here. You gotta hear this joke. There was this drunk, see, and he's stoned in a Chinese restaurant. He calls the waiter over and he says, Listen, I gotta ask you a question. Does a lemon have legs? And the waiter says, Of course not. A lemon doesn't have legs. And the drunk says, That's terrible, terrible. I just squeezed your canary in my drink. The last time I heard that, the lemon had feathers. Oh. It's good to see you, Barbara. It's good to see you, Joe. Good evening. Good evening, people. Hi, Professor. Hello. Shall we begin? Mm. How are you? Just fine. How was your weekend? I had to work. Oh, that's too bad. All right, Jack, condense it. See if you can describe your philosophy in one line. Uh, doing your own thing. Yeah, but if it isn't your own thing, it's someone else's thing. And then it's none of your business. That's the hang-up with the establishment today. They're always trying to mind somebody else's business. That's yeah. Right. All right, all right. Doing your own thing also means respecting someone else's right to do his own thing. But how do we know when it is our own thing? When it's not something somebody else is telling you to do, then it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get it all together before you can tell if it's your own thing and not your peeps. Joe, what does peeps mean? 
his people, his family. Oh, I see. What do you mean by getting it all together? Well, you drop a little acid and you take a trip around yourself and you see who you really are. But does it work? Do you really find out who you are? Well, when it isn't a bummer, it works fine. All right, but what about taking reds, second all? It's a sleeping pill. We give it every day in the hospital to make people sleep. Oh, you only go to sleep because you're told you're supposed to. It's all in your mind. After two or three times, you can control it so that you're just on the edge. Then it's a groovy high and no getting sick like with booze. Anybody that believes that has got to be a fool. Tell us why, Joe. In the first place, when he's describing the part about it all being in the mind, that's just another way of saying your body builds up tolerance to second all. Now, if you take reds three days in a row, the same amount that puts you out on the first day just doesn't do it on the third day because your body has built up that tolerance to it. And anybody who's strung out on reds is really on a bad trip, fella. Yeah, man, being strung out on reds is really a bummer. Oh, baloney, the whole thing always gets back to drugs. Drugs are for cripples. And you don't take drugs? No, I don't. Not even aspirin? Not even aspirin. Never take a drink with the boys? Well, that's different. Oh, alcohol is not a drug. Well, all right then. Technically speaking, yes. Are you a cripple? No, I'm not. I'd like to ask a question. Shoot, man, I got no secrets. You said you took LSD because it enabled you to gain insights into your personality. Yeah, that's it. You told us you took it over 150 times just to know yourself better, right? Right. Well, now, when do you think you'll get the job done? Well, what do you mean? How many more LSD drops do you think you're going to need before you know yourself? I don't know. How many times does a person have to go to a psychoanalyst before he gets his peeps out of his hair? I wouldn't know. My family was never in my hair. But then again, I didn't need an excuse to do my thing because my thing wasn't taking drugs. Oh, let's face it. The establishment is not all messed up like we are. It's all us obscene commie hippies that support the liquor industry. And it's all us obscene long hairs that draft you old folks and make you go kill innocent men, women, and children in Vietnam. I believe we discussed Jerry's debating technique last week, and I thought we'd agree to try to minimize the sarcasm. The one thing I find most interesting is apparently the one thing that has consistently been missed by the rest of you. For a moment there, I thought Bob was going to catch it. How do you mean, Professor? You said we always end up talking about dope. Isn't it also true we end up talking about Morgan? Oh, I can't help it if I'm a star, man. <laughs> Would it be a fair statement that a lot of what you say, Jerry, is just to draw attention to yourself? Getting stoned is on everybody's mind these days. That's why everybody talks about it. It's the same thing as during Prohibition. Nothing is ever the same, except dying. Care to expand on that, Norm? Jerry here is playing with his own mind and trying to convince us that he's having a good time. Yeah, man, and I'll bet you vote straight Republican and you got a sheet in your closet with eye holes. Now, you listen to me. When you walk down the street in Calcutta, you see people and you don't know whether they're sleeping or dead. And in Africa, I can get you killed for $5 American. So don't give me that song and dance about doing your own thing. Doing your own thing for most of this godforsaken world is being alive the next day. If that means blowing up some dude who's a threat to me, I'll do it. And I don't need to wear a sheet to get the job done. An eye for an eye, Norm? Call it that if you like. I think Norm's right. What are we going to do when there's so many people on the face of this earth that just by being alive, we're a threat to the survival of each other? Call war brutal, inhuman, savage, and all that other stuff. And it will be true, but war is also contraceptive. It eliminates excess population in a great big hurry. This conversation is hideous. This talk is terrible. I've spent most of my life working in hospitals, and if I believe you, why, it's brutal. You guys talk like fascists. Yeah, man, you guys pigs. Now, that's what I call timing. All right, people, that's all for tonight. Gee, after that, I could use a cup of coffee. How about you, Joe? How about a rain check, Barbara? I gotta leave now. Oh, sure, Joe, whatever you say. Hey, Jerry, hold it up a minute. Hold it up, Morgan. Police officer, what do you got in that notebook? Nothing, man. Nothing at all. Then you won't mind if I take a look, will you? What's this? Uh, you got it all wrong, man. That's just oregano. I use it in my spaghetti. I'm a gourmet cook. Sure you are. You're under arrest for possession of marijuana. Don't try it, Jerry. Don't try it.
Tuesday, April 9th, 7 p.m. It was exactly one week since I had arrested Jerry Morgan for possession for sale of marijuana. It was business as usual for Professor Grant's class, and everyone was there except Jerry. Barbara, how are you? Fine, how are you, Joe? Good, how about that coffee tonight? Well, do you think you can make it? I think I can. Joe, may I see you in my office a moment? Well, sure, Professor. I took the liberty of pulling a transcript of your grades. Oh? You're going for your master's degree in criminology, right? Yes, sir, that's correct. But in order to get your master's degree, you'll have to maintain a B average, right? Yes, sir, that's right. I don't think you're going to be able to maintain a B average, Mr. Friday. What are you getting at, Professor Grant? Or shouldn't I call you Mr. Friday? Maybe I should address you as Sergeant Friday. Or do you prefer to be known as good old friendly Joe, the schoolboy narc? You must forgive me. I've never had a police spy infiltrate my class before. You're talking about Jerry. I'm talking about you. You deliberately infiltrated my class and used information you heard to arrest one of my students. You're a police spy. What I heard in class had nothing to do with my arresting Jerry. He had two lids of marijuana in his possession. He had it in his notebook. It was in plain sight. He took us to his apartment. We found almost a full kilo of this stuff. He's a dealer, and he does his own pushing right here on this campus. But his confessions in class had nothing to do with your arresting him. That's absolutely correct. How naive do you think I am? You violated the trust of every member of that group in there. Professor Grant, Morgan was violating the state laws. He's been charged with committing a felony. Oh, for heaven's sake, man. Are we going to go through that marijuana the killer weed routine now? There's nothing wrong with marijuana. I smoke it myself. Ten to twenty million people smoke it in the United States today. That's not what's wrong here. It's the fact that we have secret police in school. The one place we should build trust. The one place we should learn without fear. This isn't Nazi Germany or Russia. This is America, the so-called open society. Why do you slink around spying on your fellow human beings? Why don't you wear your badge so people can see what you are? This country's becoming a police state. I'll tell you one thing this country is. What's that? One of the largest consumers of drugs in the world. And that, of course, justifies secret police roaming the corridors of our schools. It doesn't seem to bother you that there are secret drug pushers walking those same corridors. That still doesn't alter the fact that you're a police spy. I'm a policeman. I'm required to be on duty 24 hours a day. Now, there's nothing secret about that. And as a doctor of psychology, I'm required to respect any confidence placed in me by another human being. Now, let me tell you how it's going to be, Sergeant. Number one, I'll appear in Jerry's behalf in court and testify as to how you got your information that he's a user of narcotics. He's a pusher. And I'll explain to the rest of the class that you've decided not to attend anymore, which, of course, will earn you a failing grade. You don't have to explain anything to the class. I'm not dropping out. Class doesn't want you, Friday. You're a narc, and the class doesn't want you. Let them tell me that. You're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? I forgot you're a policeman. You need proof positive. All right? Have it your way. And how will that be? Let's put it to a vote. Or do you lack the guts, Sergeant? In case some of you haven't noticed, Jerry Morgan is not with us tonight. The reason is because this man arrested Jerry last Tuesday night after class because Jerry had a little grass in his notebook. This man is Sergeant Joe Friday of the Los Angeles Police Department. This man has been sitting in class with you, taking down all you say, hunting for something to use against you. This man is a narc. Now, after showing you all how much he trusts you, he comes before you to ask that you allow him to stay in the class. He wants you to trust him again. He wants you to put it to a vote. All right, if I say something. Anything you care to, Sergeant. I'm a policeman going to school. I saw marijuana in Jerry Morgan's possession. It was in plain sight. I arrested him according to the law. You people pay my salary to do just that. I'm in class for exactly the same reason all of you are, to try and get a passing grade and to learn something. Is that all, Sergeant? Yes, sir, that's all. Very well. All those in favor of allowing Sergeant Friday to remain in this class, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. All opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And three abstentions. That makes it nine to six. He goes. Don't forget your notebook, Sergeant. Where would a policeman be without his notebook?
Joe, why don't you go see the captain? Joe? What? Why don't you go see the captain about this school thing? No. Well, you better do something. You've been this way a week now, and I'm getting worried about you. There's nothing to worry about, Bill. Why don't you go see the captain? It isn't my way. All right, but you got to do something to get this thing off your back. I am going to do something. What? I don't know. I haven't got it all sorted out yet. What's to sort? You did what you were supposed to do. You did your job. From what you've told me about this group, all they do is sit around and try turning wrong into right. I just knew there was no way you could get a bee sitting around talking. I thought we got rid of you last week, Friday. What do you want this time? Another vote. Another vote? What makes you think another vote is going to come out any different than the last one? I want to talk to that group in there, and then I want another vote. You're kidding yourself. You've got to be some kind of masochist. You've got to enjoy being humiliated in front of all those people in there. No, sir, I don't enjoy that one pound. I don't see why I should allow it. You've been thrown out of the class, you've been expelled. Why don't we let it go at that? Because both you and I know you did a number on me last week. After what you said and the way you said it, I didn't stand much of a chance, now did I? Are you saying I deliberately distorted the facts? Are you claiming that you're not now a policeman or ever were a policeman during the three months you've been attending my class? Oh, come on, Professor Grant. You know I'm not working undercover in this school. And how am I supposed to know that? When you pull the transcript of my grades, it says right there that I'm a policeman with the city of Los Angeles. That's not where I found out. Jerry called me after his attorney got him released on a writ. But you could have found out any time by just pulling that transcript, now couldn't you? So? Well, if I were an undercover narcotics officer, don't you think I'd play it a little better than that? I had no reason to pull your grades until this happened. Now look, Professor Grant, it's the principle of the thing, right? It most certainly is. Then what have you got to lose by putting it to a vote again? Unless you're afraid I'll swing a couple over to my side. All right, we'll do it. But you'll have to swing more than a couple to stay in class. How do you mean that? You've got to get a full two-thirds of that vote. Two-thirds? Take it or leave it, Sergeant. Sergeant Friday here has accused me of being unfair to him in my remarks last week. And he'd like to see if he can convince some of you to join his point of view. The good sergeant would like another vote to see if he'll be allowed to stay in this class. For what purpose? I haven't the faintest idea. Unless he's got his eye on making another bust. Sergeant. All right. Let me say for the record, if you vote to let me come back to this class and I see anybody else holding, I'll arrest him just the same as I did Jerry Morgan. But why should we let you come back at all? Tell me, what's the idea of this class? To get to know each other, right? Well, I'm a policeman. Now, you ask any question, as long as it doesn't involve a case now under investigation or before the courts, and I'll tell it just like it is. Do you like being a policeman, Joe? Sometimes, no. Sometimes it hurts. Why are you, then? Because it's my profession. Kicking little people around. You consider somebody who sells narcotics as one of the little people, do you? Yeah, man. If somebody wants to smoke a little dope or drop a pill, who's the victim? The guy who's doing it. Now, shouldn't he have the right to do anything he wants with his own body? Man, it's a crime without a victim. When you say using dope is a crime without a victim, who's picking up the tab for all the lost wages, the stolen property, and the destroyed lives? How many overdoses have you seen come through your hospital, Barbara? Quite a few. How many die? Too many. Kids? Most of them. The county of Los Angeles is spending over a million dollars a month just handling kids who use and sell dope. Now, who's the victim? We are. All of us. Sergeant, I'd like to ask you a question. Okay, ask it. If you were the chief of police, how would you handle the narcotics problem? Pretty much the way it's being handled today. I disagree. We need tougher laws. We should really crack down on them. Maybe so. But half of you people in this room are in an uproar because I enforced one of the laws already on the books. Let's get to the bottom line here. The law, your law, tells us we're supposed to arrest people when they commit crimes, when they break those laws. We arrest them, and the courts don't see fit to punish them. Or if they do, and they're sent to prison, it doesn't seem to do any good, because every year there are more and more people breaking the law. And every year we're finding it more difficult to recruit policemen because they don't want to put up with the frustration, public apathy, and the abuse, and the low wages. Now, I don't like being called a pig any more than some of you like being called a female dog's relative. Tell me something, Sergeant. What's your personal opinion of marijuana? We already know your official opinion. Prejudiced. Now, why do you say that? I see the results every hour, on the hour, every day. The kids, I've seen what it does to them. Every time you pick up a youngster who's dropping acid, nine out of ten times he's holding marijuana. I judge weed by the company it keeps. I think it's about time we put this to a vote. I'd like to say one more thing, if it's all right. 
All right, get it over with. Nine of you people think I violated your trust by arresting Jerry Morgan. Okay. But when did we vote to suspend the laws of the state of California? I haven't missed a class here. Now, when did we do that? You don't like the laws on marijuana, then you and your friends get together and you change them. Now this question of trust. Isn't trust another word for responsibility? Well, I have responsibility that I've sworn to uphold. That's my trust. What about Jerry Morgan's responsibilities? As a citizen, he's supposed to obey the law. That's his trust. Now, when I gave my oath, I agreed to enforce all the laws, not just the ones I agreed with. I think you people paying the bills have a right to expect me to live up to my word. Now, we've been rapping on and on about doing our own thing. Well, that's my own thing. Keeping the faith, baby, with the people of this city. Thank you for listening to me. All right. All those in favor of expelling Sergeant Friday once and for all, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all those in favor of letting him stay, raise your hands. Seven, eight. Eight to eight. That makes it a tie. I believe we had an agreement. Just a minute. Where are you going, Sergeant? The vote was even. Friday made a deal. He had to get a two-thirds vote to stay in this class. Who wrote that rule? I agreed to it. Well, I didn't. I've been sitting through this silly mess for a week now. I wanted to see what kind of a policeman this man really is. I wanted to wait and see if he'd take this nonsense that's been thrown at him or if he was really interested in remaining in this class, if he'd come back. Well, he didn't disappoint me. He's back, he's interested, and he's going to stay. For the record, I'm a practicing attorney attending his class for the same reasons as the rest of you, to learn about human nature. Well, I just took a postgraduate course with this ridiculous display. Now, let me spell this out for you people in simple English. This man will be allowed to stay in this class and complete the semester and receive a grade commensurate with his ability in this particular subject. Or I'm prepared to file charges against you, Professor Grant, in his behalf. Charges? What charges? Denying him an education because of his occupation. A couple of fancy words for that, Professor. It's called job discrimination. That's fine coming from you. You didn't even vote. Certainly I didn't. Why? Neither you nor any of the people in this class can vote this man out. Policemen have constitutional rights, too. Or didn't you know that? just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On June 3rd, trial was held in Department 195, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty of violating Section 11530.5, possession for sale of marijuana. This was his second conviction for the same offense, which is punishable by imprisonment in the state prison for five to 15 years. <laughs> 